So this question is a diagram question. I say that because of the table that's provided here. So let's take a look at the table and see what information is being provided to us. So it looks like this is all about the Townsend Realty Group investments. Our first column is property address. Next, we have purchase price in dollars. And next, we have monthly rental price in dollars. The information here says the Townsend Realty Group invested in the five different properties listed in the table above. The table shows the amount in dollars the company paid for each property and the corresponding monthly rental price in dollars the company charges for the property at each of the five locations. All right, I'm going to say that there was no additional value given by reading that. We pretty much can see everything that that said. We can pretty much see in the table. So question 23 says the relationship between the monthly rental price R in dollars and the property's purchase price P in thousands of dollars, so that's important to know, can be represented by a linear function. Which of the following functions represents the relationship? So first of all, it doesn't tell us that we're focusing on a specific property address. So I'm assuming that there's some answer here that works for any of the property addresses, okay? So I'm going to just choose one. So let's just go with the first one. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna use Clearwater Lane as my example because the, the way to approach this question looks like it's gonna be a strategy that I call PIQ, which just stands for plug in information from the question, right? The table here provides, and again, if we're focusing on Clearwater Lane, the table here provides the purchase price in thousands of dollars, right? So let's just write that down. So for us, P would not equal 128,000. It would actually equal 128 because again, this says purchase price in thousands of dollars. And then R of P, the monthly rental price is equal to 950 and that's for also for Clearwater Lane. So now let's just use this data and try each answer choice. So choice A would say that 950 is equal to 2.5 times 128 minus 870. Now we can take a look at this and pretty much see that this number here by no means will be larger than 870, so it's gonna be smaller than 870. So there's just no chance that this is equal, right? Because I'll have a negative value here, right? So I'm not gonna even waste my time putting that in my calculator. Choice B, again, using the same value, so A is crossed out, I'd have 950 equals five times 128 plus 165. Well, let's try that out. So five times 128 is equal to 640. So it's become 640 plus 165. And 640 plus 165 is 805. So right, so 950 does not equal 805. So that means B is gone. So we're gonna just keep on trying more questions or more answer choices. So choice C would be 950 is equal to 6.5 times 128 plus 400. And 40. So again, back to my calculator, 6.5 times 128. Well, that's 832. Now adding 440 to that is definitely not going to equal 950. So C is gone. So D better be correct, at least if I'm doing it the right way, right? So I don't, I'm not going to just assume D is right and move on. I'm going to try it because if it's wrong, then it shows me that, you know, maybe there's something wrong with how I decided to approach this question. So choice D would be 950, right? Because I'm replacing R of P with 950 is equal to 7.5 times P, which for us is 128, and then minus 10. So let's see what that is. 7.5 times 128 is 960. And here it is. 960 minus 10 is in fact equal to 950. This is a true statement and therefore choice D is the best answer. So what's great about this is uh, if you had tried or if you decide to try any of these other property addresses with their corresponding numbers, right, we should get the exact same 
answer. We should all get choice D. Just don't forget that the question does very clearly tell us that P is in thousands, right? So basically, these zeros don't matter when we go to plug them in.